Okay. Thank you, Seth. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Let's all open our hearts and call on the Lord to come by here, which is what kumbaya means. Enjoy the bells.
We're going to call Isabel and Graham up at this time. Come on up, guys. Sarah, too. Sarah, too. Absolutely. Good morning, beautiful church. How is everybody out there? God is good? All the time? God is good. My name's Scott. I haven't met many of you before, but... Let's have a big round of applause for this wonderful, beautiful confirmation class. They've worked hard, and they've studied hard, and now they want to shout for joy. Lift it up this morning. Oh, round your birth of praise, there's a song to raise like a banner high. Lift up your grateful hearts to the morning star. He's alive and here with us. So shout for joy. Shout for joy. For the Son of God is the saving one. He's the saving one. Shout for joy. See what love has done. He has come for us. He's the saving one. Stood on sinking sand, he reached out his hand, pulled us to his side. We turned our hearts away, he was strong to say, Now our Savior reigns in us. So lift it up and shout, shout it out. Shout. For joy, for the Son of God is the saving one. He's the saving one. Shout for joy, see what love has done. He has come for us. He's the saving one. Play a little bit, Seth. Ready, kids? Here we go. Ah, 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 there is no other God like you. We sing the praises that you're due. Jesus, you have saved us. Yours is the Lamb above all names. You are the name above all names. Jesus, you have saved us. So shout it out. Shout for joy. For the Son of God is the saving one. He's the saving one. Shout for joy. See what love has done. He has come for us. He's the saving one. Take us home, Seth. Round of applause for our 
confirmation singers. Will you bow your head with me, beautiful church? Lord, as this confirmation class goes on, help them to remember that when there seems to be no way and all our own solutions have let us down, you will be there by our side to guide us with love and set us surely on the right path. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful class. And as they grow in their love and their worship and their knowledge of you, um, just remind them that they can lean on each other and that they are in this together, that they are in their faith together. And if they have questions and uh, they can come to their parents, they can come to their worship leaders and just teach them to lean one another on one another. Lord, we know that earthly things surely shall fade. But your word, your light, will remain and guide this class the rest of their days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you so much, Isabel. Honey, thank you. Um, I've been with these kids, most of them, for my 14 years here. A few of them for five, six, seven, eight years, but I've got to watch these kids grow up. And it's been such a blessing to be a part of their lives. And it's so wonderful to gather this day and, and watch them profess their faith in Jesus Christ and become active adult members of the church. Uh, the heart of what you're gonna be doing, boys and girls, is receiving and sharing good news. So hear the good news this day. We all mess up, but God is there all the time to clean up our messes. We all fall down. God is there every time we stumble to pick us up and set us on a path to the kingdom once again. Uh, we all make mistakes, but God's love and mercy are perfect. They are with us all of our days, and uh, we have nothing to fear in life and death. I want you to know that God has called and claimed you. His good news, his reign, the kingdom of love is over you throughout your days. So know that you are forgiven now and forevermore. And God's people say, Amen. Lauren's got some announcements for us. Let's give Lauren a hand, by the way, for how awesome she is. You'll be hearing that sound a lot as we disinfect the mic. Good morning. Um, so just a few quick announcements. Um, first of all, I um, apologize. I have mistakenly left Kelsey Lublin off my list of statements of faith, as she told me this morning. Um, I don't know, I guess my mind was just in free, 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 but there's 10 of them. So um, Kelsey's gonna go after Alison in the middle of the testimonies. Sorry, Kelsey, but you're on there now. Um, Afterwards, um, we will have a reception for the confirmands um, out the front. So when you exit church this morning, please exit through the narthex out onto the lawn. That will be where there's going to be um, sandwiches and um, cake and a time of fellowship together. Um, and hopefully I can tie all the kids down to get a picture of them all together before they all scurry off. So do not leave here till I get some pictures. Um, You'll see the um, Vacation Bible School registration has officially opened today. You can register online for Vacation Bible School or you can come down to the office or email me and I can send you a form for registration. We still need volunteers, so if you can volunteer anyway during the week, if you have middle schoolers and high schoolers that you want to get out the house and come do some good, send them to me and I'll put them to work during VBS. But it's not really work because the kids enjoy it, right? It's fun, VBS, helping out as junior counselors. So um, please let me know if you can help or have youth that can help during VBS. It's going to be from July 19th to 23rd. Also, there's going to be a new members class this Wednesday and the following Wednesday. So if you're new to the church um, and are thinking of joining the church, you can join those classes. And um, you can get some more information about that from David if you um, if that's the first time you've heard of that. David can give you some more information for that. So reach out to him or me in the office. And finally, um, there's not going to be any Sunday school um, this morning because it's a family service. However, I have put various um, coloring material and crayons and toys out in the narthex. So if your kids are getting a little antsy or you have um, um, elementary kids that would like to do some coloring, you can grab some stuff like that from out the back in the narthex and feel free to take your kids out to the narthex to play during the service if they get a little bit, um, they want to sit still. Um, for those of you who um, don't know me, I am the youth director at this church. 
And along with all the youth, this is also my first time going through confirmation because when I started working here a few years back, I started in that in-between year year of confirmation. So this group of youth is the first youth that I've gone through confirmation with. And I am so excited for you to all hear their statements of faith because I've read them all and they are really special and unique to each person. And I find, in my opinion and experiences, that a lot of families and kids go through confirmation for the kind of milestone ritualistic experience of confirmation. You know, they go through it, get to the finish line of being confirmed, and then that's the end, a task that's now complete, a milestone that's been experienced. But what is so special about our kids that we have here today is that this hasn't just been a go through the motions experience for them. They've actually thoughtfully and enthusiastically explored their faith and have started to connect what they've grown up listening to with what a real time relationship with God means for them in their life and how it's relevant. And when you hear their statements of faith, you'll hear them take ownership of that and um, they talk about their faith in such a mature way for ninth and 10th graders. So yes, Confirmation Sunday is always really fun and a special event, but knowing how real this is for these kids and the kind of personal faith journeys that they've been on the last few years makes it even more special. And um, I do a lot of things around here as many of y'all know, because I work in the office as well. So I do a lot around here. Um, but being a part of these kids' faith journeys has been the absolute best part of my job. Again, getting a little emotional bit. <laughs> um, and it really is an honor to be able to teach them, learn from them, and support them. I am insanely proud of each of you. I really am. I didn't think I was going to get emotional, gosh. Don't even know what's going to hit you, do you? Um, and I know um, how proud I am of, as I stand up here trying not to cry, I can't even imagine how proud all of you parents are out there knowing um, what awesome kids you've raised that are getting up before us this morning. So, whew. Confirmation is coming to a close today, but I feel so much excitement knowing that all you guys are just starting to touch upon the great plan and calling that God has for each of your lives. So with that said, you've heard enough from me. So I'm gonna invite our first confirmand, um, Deirdrick, up here to get us started. Good morning, everybody. I, as a young adult who's been living with Christ throughout my lifetime, believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I especially believe in my personal relationship with God. Jesus, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, is the biggest part of my faith. He died for everyone's sins, and we as individuals should repay him through prayer, serving God, God's people, and song. Despite being someone living with Christians and attending church every week, I still didn't see myself as a true believer. I went to church because I was forced, I didn't pray, and I didn't find any interest in it. Despite being at such a low point in my life, at the mere age of 14, I still didn't turn to God. I turned my sadness into anger and blame. Now I realize how privileged and lucky I am. I am surrounded by wonderful positive people in school, after school activities, and church every week. However, at that point in my life back then, I denied it. I told myself that I deserved better and God wasn't there for me in a time of need. When in fact, he was actually knocking on my door and I was refusing to let him in. Maybe a year ago, I was still in a low place. But over time, I slowly started appreciating the little things in life and being grateful for what I had. Finally, I decided to talk to God. I thanked him for, for such good times and great people and that was a turning point in my life. Finally letting God in. 
The amazing people in my life, along with God's presence, were what kept me happy to this day. My amazing friends, inside and out of this church, my youth group, our incredible times together, and finally my family. Despite everything that could possibly be going on with my relationship with myself or others, I know that my family is still there for me no matter what. And no matter what happens with us, they still will be supporting me on my, be by, my, my, by my side. Letting God into my life changed it for the better and for good. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you. You do not be dismay, dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I know God is with me at all times, at my highest point and my lowest. Amen. I believe that God the Father, the creator and artist, is love. He commands us to live in love and spread his love everywhere. I believe that he created us so that we would become family and wouldn't be alone. I believe that each and every one of us was created to be perfectly imperfect, that none of us are without flaws so that we can learn to accept who we are. I believe he gave us Jesus. Born from the Virgin Mary and conceived by the Holy Spirit, he is God's only Son and our Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus was fully human and fully God, so he knows our struggles and temptations. Jesus came not so that all sin would end, but so that we know that we are forgiven by God and can turn to redemption. Jesus was a man who cared about others no matter who they were or how much they sinned. In the same way, we should go forth with our lives and stop judging others for how much they've sinned or their differences. Instead, we should be the blanket to support them. Jesus was sent to earth to bring us closer to God and died to give us a place in the heaven in the afterlife. I believe that the Bible is God's love letter to us, that the stories and lessons within it are to guide us in our everyday lives, even hundreds of years later. I believe that the Bible is the easiest way to see God's work. From Genesis to Revelations, we see the journey of God's miracles and the people who come to believe in him. I believe that the church is our community, and it's our duty as members of it to help and support everyone. God did not call us to be greedy or condemning, but selfless and accepting. The church is a holy place for everyone to be able to feel welcome and seek refuge. God gave each and every one of us talents and gifts that can be used to worship and spread his message. Whether it's singing, teaching, preaching, playing an instrument, or dancing, we can all use our talents within our church community to glorify God. I believe that God made us all inherently good from birth, that evil is not born but learned. I believe that God gave us free will so that when the choices between what is right and wrong come up, we willingly choose right. I believe that in life, we have to take the good with the bad, the highs and the lows, the ebbs and the flows. I believe that in our brightest days, and even through our darkest storms, God is constant, that he sends miracles in the most unexpected ways. The Holy Spirit is here and here to stay. God the Father has a plan for all of us, and sometimes we need to give him full reins. I believe in God, in a God of justice and equity. God gave us a voice to speak out against the injustices and unfairnesses of the world, to make it a better place. I believe that God put us in this world to make a change, even if extremely small. We need to do everything in our power to make sure that everyone has an equal chance to succeed and excel. I believe that confirmation is a deeply personal choice that I made because I wanted to learn more about God. It's a time where we make the active decision to join the church and accept God as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, during which we try to gain an understanding of the inconceivable things he does for us. I believe that confirmation is about making long-lasting bonds with the people going on the exploration with you, that we share relationships deeper than most because of the level of trust we have for each other. I believe that growing our faith doesn't end with confirmation because we are continuously evolving and changing. And lastly, I believe that everyone has a story, 
a journey to how they became who they are and how they came into their faith. I believe that God gave us all different stories with different hardships so that we can share our experiences with others and grow closer to them through God. I believe in God the Father who created all things. I believe that he is my heavenly Father and he will always be there protecting and strengthening me. I believe that my faith in God will never leave me feeling alone in bad times. I will be able to rely on him through prayer to find my way. I will not be fearful of what is to come because I know he will protect me. God will love me all of the time and accept my faults and mistakes. God is protecting me a loving life. God is promising me a loving life with hope, happiness, and love.
Good morning. I define myself as a Christian. It is part of my identity and my faith is what I believe in. The core basis of my belief is in the Trinity. God the Father, who sent his Son to die for us. Jesus the Son, who was crucified on the cross. And finally, the Holy Spirit, which lives inside me. I was baptized in this church and have been coming ever since. I grew up with Dietrich and Michael and we've become a group. These two are the people I can lean on and ask for prayers as well as the other people here today. I constantly ask for prayer because I believe there's so much power in it. My confirmation journey was very personal for me because it gave me the opportunity to grow my faith. Most of the time with God is spent in prayer and study while the rest is spent in groups and at church. After being home for such a long time, I started to focus on my prayers more and more. My meaning, my meaning, my confirmation for me was learning how to pray and how to put meaning into my prayer. After learning how to pray, I understood the need for it, how it truly helped me and how it is vital in every Christian's life. These two years have brought anxiety for me and many of my other friends. In youth group, we all agreed we needed to learn more about how to deal with our anxiety using our faith. I again found out how important prayer was to me. Over the past couple of months, I've started to journal and write down my prayers. I make three columns and focus on what I'm thankful for, what I ask for, and what I want to be forgiven for. These columns structure my prayer to help me get everything out of my mind that I needed to. I usually have my quiet time at night when I do this, but my anxiety wasn't just nightly, it was daily. When I get anxious, I don't focus on thankfulness or repentance by human error in those stressful moments. Our focus isn't, isn't on our blessings, but the overwhelming events occurring at that moment. I pray for peace, comfort, and strength, and recite my favorite verses to get me through the moment. These verses are Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Also, 1 Peter 5.7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I use these verses to get me through the moments that seem everlasting. I do this when I get anxious because the Lord tells us to. In Philippians 4.6, where it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. I'm constantly anxious and I follow this verse by praying repetitively. My faith has kept me together when I thought I couldn't. A few moments of which anxiety usually take over my life are when I had COVID, have to go to the doctors, return to school or lost family members. The power of prayer is something I discovered during my confirmation journey and is what keeps me from being restrained by fear. I wanna thank my mom as well as Lauren and my opa and my sister for being there for me spiritual, as spiritual leaders and guides which we, all need, which we all need. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this morning and the opportunity to gather during these straining times to worship your name and to celebrate the new members of the church. I ask that you can show us all the power that prayer holds and how we can use it. I ask that today we can start praying for someone who needs it. I also ask that we can utilize prayer to strengthen and grow our faith in you in the times when we are fearful and anxious. Lord, bring us peace and comfort, strength and healing. Help us to know that you are always there and will never leave us. Let the Holy Spirit work inside us so we know what we need to pray for. Make it abundantly clear your will for our lives so we may follow you accordingly in love, faith, and hope. Give us discipline we need today to make prayer a daily part of our lives. Give us the desire to talk to you to grow our relationship instead of prayer being a check off the to-do list. I ask that we as believers can be a light to those who need it most. I ask that you continue to protect and bless our church community. Lord, thank you for my salvation, the role you have for me in this church, for my membership of the community, and the free gift of eternal life. Amen.
I was first introduced to God when I was almost one years old, right when I was baptized. I've stayed close with him for 14 years and counting. It hasn't always been easy believing in God, but I am lucky to have stayed with him. Sometimes, when moments have been rough, I felt that God wasn't with me, or I thought that he didn't want to help me for some reason. I now believe God is always with me and will help me through my journey in life. In Isaiah 41.10, it states, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold your righteous hand, your right hand. Another passage I hold closely is 1 John 3.1. It states, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and this is what we are. These two passages are close to me because I strongly, strongly relate to them and believe in them. In fourth grade, I did not feel that close to God as I feel today, but I was running for school secretary and I wanted some help. I prayed to God the night before the results and I was very nervous. Luckily, I won and realized the power and what praying can do for me. I pray every day now, but I realize that even though God doesn't physically respond, I know he is there for me. The second passage relates because again, sometimes I haven't felt close with God. Recently, I have participated in more church activities and have realized what a child of God means. I am proud to be called a child of God and to help others through God, including the soup kitchen. I hope to continue my life through God, and that is why I'm getting confirmed. Getting confirmed can get me closer to God and it can help me participate more in church. Some things I hope to do more is to go on retreats with friends and help other people on mission trips. Helping my neighbors can help me get closer to God, and that's all I want. I want to live a life with God. Good morning. As we all know, God is capable of many things. He shows us loss and he shows us love. I believe that God has made a plan for everyone in some way to help them grow as a person. He has made our plans for us and only us to follow, to grow but to learn from the different experiences. But most importantly, he shows us the way to be unique and to find our way through life as he guided his son Jesus through thick and thin. He was a human, but more importantly, he was a spiritual being. He died and was crucified on the cross. He was dead for three days until he rose from the dead. Jesus sacrificed his life for our sins to be forgiven, to represent that no matter what, our sins will be forgiven and God loves us unconditionally. I believe in the Holy Spirit and that your sins will be forgiven no matter what. God forgives us even if we don't feel worthy of his forgiveness, which is important to always remember. No matter how guilty we feel, we all have to remember that God loves us and our body is our body and no one can take that away from us. Accepting that our sins will be forgiven no matter what is not only reassurance, but also steps closer each time to connecting to God and your faith. As I stated before, God is capable of so many different things that are incredible. God has shown me so many more important things in life by throwing curveballs and helpers along the way, such as family, friends, and even neighbors. Luke 8.50 says, Jesus heard this. He responded, don't be afraid, just keep trusting, and she will be healed. When I heard this passage, I felt connected to similar situations that I have gone through. I have had many opportunities to turn to God for the better out of the scary and bad situations. My sister has been such an inspiration to me. She was the one there when it was storming in the night, and she was the one there to put a smile on my face at any time. My sister was injured in a bad car accident about a year ago, and I knew at that time was the right time to look for God and his prayers and his healing. The power of prayer is unbelievable, and I know that it would be the most efficient way of healing. I would pray constantly, I would pray before bed, throughout the day, and I would pray whenever I had a few seconds to communicate with God. I am old enough to know the power of prayer and how, can they, how they can impact situations, so I did them as often as I could. I would not only look for prayers within, but among my friends. Charlotte and Kelsey, I thank you for all that you did to help me get through these tough times. And with every passing day, I felt that the healing process was faster and more efficient. God works in wonderful ways. He heals the broken and makes them stronger than before. 
Aside from all things, we have challenges put in our path and we are given rewards along the way, such as the wonderful people getting confirmed with me here today. I wish us all the best in our journey to better our faiths and to become closer to God. And in God's name we pray, amen. During my confirmation journey, I have come to further deepen and strengthen my beliefs and thoughts around faith, God, Jesus, and the church. Faith, something I only just fully understood recently. Faith is what you truly believe inside and out. If you truly believe in God and everything he does or did, that means you have faith in God. This winter, I watched a movie and one of the lines stuck with me that I also applies to faith. They said, seeing isn't believing, believing is seeing. And that's just like faith. You just believe something without ever seeing it. And yes, through your life, you might think about these things that you believe in and question it, but that's okay. God finds a way to reveal himself to you during these times. Faith is such a powerful thing that helps us every day. God, the father to everyone and everything. Over the years, I have become even closer to God without even realizing it. He has helped me through my many injuries, including the one I'm going through right now. God definitely provides times of trial and testing to prove our faith is real, which helps us grow even stronger. God will forgive everyone who believes in him, no matter what you do or say, he will always forgive you and love you. God is all-knowing and is here to help guide us through our path of life. Without God, none of us would be here today. Jesus, a teacher and a savior to all of us. We talk about some of his life's moments every year during this big holiday, like Christmas and Easter. He was sent down to God for us. He taught people about God. He helped the unfortunate. He came down to prove to people that he was really God's son, so he can truly show us who God is. One of my favorite stories that I've been told was when he helped a blind man see or when he helped someone walk after not being able to for a long time. Some people didn't like him and many didn't believe he was really the son of God, but he also had many followers that believed in him throughout his journey. Panintuus Pilate didn't like him or believe him, so he ordered him to hung, be hung on a cross to die to prove he is not really the son of God. But Jesus prophesied he rose back up from the dead after three days. He died on the cross to take away our sins. Church, through confirmation, I will become a member of this church. This will give many opportunities to get help, for, to help others and to also continue learning about God. Plus, this will strengthen my relationship with God and will affirm my belief in him. By all of this, not only do I get to show my faith, but also worship with the congregation, helping support each other and grow together learning about God. At this point, this is one of the best days of my life, and I want to thank you all so much. And there's more to come. Uh, but we have been listening and sitting for a long time, so now let's stand and stretch and uh, pray these words that we are about to sing, uh, which the kids have been talking about to this point. Um, let's, uh, let's move them from our head to our hearts as we praise God this day. Please join me as we sing number 522. The uh, words are in your bulletin, Lord, when I come into this life. Lord, 
Hello. I've always been the kind of person that has to try things out on my own. I'm stubborn, I can't take anyone's word for it, and I have to learn my lessons on my own. This trait, this niche that I have, can pertain to things as simple as trying a new food to as deep as trying a new lifestyle. You never know what the outcome will be, but it definitely keeps you on your toes and it exposes you to anything and everything you choose. Trying sushi, for instance, was a great choice. Most people will look at it and say, raw fish, I don't want it. But in trying it, I found one of my favorite foods. On the other hand, joining the cheer squad, not that great. But both of these experiences may not have been good, but I'm glad to at least have given both a chance. Now you might be wondering, why am I going on about cheerleading and sushi? But I have a point, I promise. When I was younger, I enjoyed going to church because I knew it made my mom happy. And I figured that if I wanted to be happy, then I should go to church too. But with time I grew out of it, um, I no longer cared about pleasing my mom. I wasn't at a point. <laughs> I was at a point in my life where I wasn't sure of who I was or who I was meant to be. And I honestly wasn't sure about much of anything. The one thing I was sure of was the fact that I didn't need God or a congregation to find out who I was. I convinced myself that I could grow up and get out of this hole of nothingness on my own, and I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> I spent the first months of confirmation begging to get out of it, I felt out of place, I felt disconnected, and I was just completely and utterly uninterested. It wasn't until the very end of confirmation that I realized the importance of spirituality and having a relationship with God. I had to lose my faith in order to find it. In typical me fashion, I had to try out a life without God to realize how much I needed him. I need faith, I thrive off of prayer, and I'm so glad to have been given the opportunity to find that side of me. With the help of God, I've been able to really become a person I'm proud of. I've grown up, and I'd like to say that I've grown out of defiance, but that's a work in progress. And that's okay. I've grown up a lot, but the thing I find so beautiful about having a faith and trust in God is knowing that I still have growing to do and not seeing that as a bad thing. Growing is good, change is good, and when in doubt, you just have to remember that God is there for you 100% of the time. God knows us more than we even know ourselves, 
And being able to put my trust in him has made my life so much more enjoyable. I've become more than what I ever could have imagined, and I couldn't be more thankful for that. I'm thankful to my parents for pushing me to finish confirmation. I'm thankful to Lauren and David for making this process so worthwhile. And I'm thankful to this congregation for not doubting me even when I doubted myself. Thank you for listening. Thank you for always putting up with me. And thank you for inspiring me to always try new things. Good morning. So I believe in God because I believe that he's in all of us, even if it's a small amount. And I've always been told that God has a plan for us by my parents, my family, and anybody else. So also, in my lifetime, I've met so many people, so many people I've learned to love and hate and just been there for me. So in the midst of the virus spreading last year, my grandmother, who had been in a nursing home, passed away, unfortunately. The past few years had been rough when it comes to my family and her. This is because she would often get in accidents, and as a result, she would travel between hospitals and nursing homes all year. And after being exposed, she eventually moved to a hospice where she ended up passing away. On May 2nd of last year, a priest was invited to pray for her and bless her when she had passed. And that same day is when this happened. Losing a family member for me was hard, and especially hard because I couldn't be there for her, and so couldn't my family. I couldn't grasp my feelings, being that this was being the first person in my family that I've been able to create a relationship with who had passed. My mother and father have learned the feeling of losing a family member that they were close with, and they helped me understand what to feel during this time. And I was unsure whether I should focus on moving on but I was keeping the memories and good times in my mind when I thought of her. And I believe that the main reason that I'm being confirmed is to prove my belief in God and believe that someone and something is in all of us who can motivate, teach, and, faith, and have faith in us all. I think that for someone just to say that they believe in God shows that they really don't know too much about him. And I wanted to learn about why I should have faith in him and why I, he should have faith in me. I always strive to be better, stand for, and uh, embrace things that I like, and I hoped God could give me an advantage by learning this, and I wanted new things to believe in, and I think that he has helped me, and I have done exactly that. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you, John 15, 12. To me, God is love and acceptance. I believe that God has not only created this earth, but the people wandering this earth as well. He has created every single one of us to be unique and filled with our own personalities and values, but most importantly, he has created us with love and wants us to share that love with our neighbors. God showed his love for everyone through his son, Jesus. Born through Mary, Jesus was not only a spiritual being, but he was human and he was crucified and died on the cross. He was dead for three days until he rose and came back alive. Jesus died for our sins. He died to show us that no matter who you are and what you have done, he loves you. Jesus had hardships in his life that were painful and long, but he got through them because of his love for his father and his love for everyone. I believe in the Holy Spirit and that if you sin, you'll be forgiven. People stack too much guilt on themselves for actions that they have done. An important message is to really believe that you are forgiven and that you will be forgiven no matter what. Your body was created for you and only you, and that body will live through you until death and through the afterlife as well. Letting your sins be forgiven is an act of moving forward through your life and moving forward through your faith. I mentioned that to me, God represents and shows love. In my opinion, love is overlooked. A good reference to what I mean is the song Chasing Cars by Snow Patrol. Those three words said too much, but not enough. It's basically saying that I love you is said too much, but not meant enough. 
That line means a lot to me because saying I love you and meaning it are two totally different things. Pointless I love yous to friends and family are said all the time, but how many times do you think about those words and really mean it? God has shown me that if you look for it, love is all around. As God surrounds the walls of this church with love, take a moment and look around yourself. Fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, husbands and wives, old friends, best friends, and family. Speaking of my particular mother, back when I was around seven years old, she got a pretty bad head injury. Me being so young, I didn't really understand much of the pain or the feeling that she was going through, but I happened to know someone who did. I wrote a letter to God and gave it to my mom, who then gave it to the church. The letter was praying for her and hoping that she would get better soon. My mom is a big role model in my life, and she's a big part of why I have my faith in the first place. Growing up, I wasn't at the church every single Sunday. A lot of the time, I, felt, I found myself feeling really left out at Sunday school because I didn't understand the Bible or how to read it, and I felt like the kids around me had so much more faith. My mom was the only one who believed in me and believed that I had special faith that's hard to come by. I, without a doubt, believe that without my mom, I wouldn't have reconnected with God and really got my faith back. I don't think I say I love you to my mom enough. I say the little I love yous when leaving the house, but never the heartwarming ones that leave you really thinking. I don't give my mom as much credit as she deserves. She's hardworking and kind, and she's done so much for me and my family. I know that she will always be there for me, and that's all that's needed. I love my mom a lot, and I don't know how I'd survive without her. God and Jesus have shown me that love can be portrayed and shown in many ways, and that they will love you no matter what. I think that everyone can start saying I love you more to friends and family, including me. I not only have a wonderful family that cares for me and loves me dearly, but I also have friends who I can trust to stick up for me and be there when I need them. I want to take a moment in this statement and thank all of my friends from the church. I have found some of those caring and loving people that I hope to remain close with throughout high school and hopefully throughout the rest of my life as well. The memories that have been created with this wonderful group getting confirmed with me today are some of the best memories I have. Everyone beside me getting confirmed as well deserves all, deserves all love and support. They are all genuinely amazing people, and I love them and cherish all the time spent with them. I love and care for all the people in my life that have been there for me, and I love God for loving me and being there always. In God's name we pray. Amen. Testing one, two, one, two. Yes, it's on. I couldn't pre <clears throat> I couldn't be prouder of you boys and girls. Um, it has been the greatest blessing of my life to be a part of raising kids in the way of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to see you today um, coming up, sharing yourselves, um, sharing your thoughts, your beliefs, um, deeply moves me and just gives me hope for our world. And so thank you very much. Today you are um, transitioning from being children of God to being young men and women in God. So I'm going to ask you to publicly profess your faith and uh, I'm going to present uh, by way of the session, Graham Deniscus, Isabel Miller, Kelsey LeBallon, Nemat Edisa, Charlotte Middleton, Allison Eggert, Dietrich Jonke, Michael Donofrio, Henry Hernandez, and Nick Cordling for the reaffirmation of the baptismal covenant into which they were baptized. They now desire to publicly profess their faith and to assume greater responsibility in the life of the church and God's mission in the world. We rejoice that you now desire to declare your faith and to share with us in our common ministry. In baptism, you were joined to Christ Jesus and made members of his church. In the community of the people of God, you have learned of God's purposes for you and for all creation. You have been nurtured at the table of our Lord and called to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Hear now these words from Holy Scripture. You are children with the saints, members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. We are all what God has made us to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Uh, boys and girls, soon to be young men and women, marked by the profession of faith, would you please come on forward? I ask you now to publicly declare your faith, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church in which we were all baptized. So trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you, Graham? Do you, Isabel? Do you, Kelsey? Do you, Nemat? Do you, Charlotte? Do you, Allison? Do you Dietrich? Do you Michael? Do you Henry? Do you Nick? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you Graham? Do you Isabel? Do you Kelsey? Do you Nemat? Do you Charlotte? Do you Allison? Do you Dietrich? Do you Michael? Do you, Henry? Do you, Nick? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you, Graham? Will you, Isabel? Will you, Kelsey? Will you, Nemat? Will you, Charlotte? Will you, Allison? Will you, Dietrich? Will you, Michael? Will you, Henry? And will you, Nick? Amen. <clears throat> and now with the whole church, uh, let us confess the faith of our baptism as we recite the Apostles' Creed. Does, do you all have it memorized? Anybody want a version? Anybody want it? All good to go? All right. Let's stand and uh, affirm our faith. It can be found on page 14 in the hymnals that were handed out to you. I don't think it's in the bulletin. Um, so you can find it on page 14. We're doing the traditional version of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And let us pray together. Uh, Father, what a blessing it is to uh, come and hear your young people raise their voices uh, and call out to the world uh, to further your kingdom of love and justice and peace for all. We thank you, Lord, that you have called and claimed them from before their birth, and you will call and claim them and bring them back into your eternal kingdom in the fullness of time. We praise you, Father, that they all have tremendous gifts inside them, that you have been developing these gifts of your Holy Spirit within them, 
uh, from the earliest of days in the church and in schools and in our communities. And we just pray, Father, uh, that you would bless their minds. They are all so smart, and we thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that you've already poured out upon them despite their being young. And we ask, O oh Lord, that whatever subjects in school that they excel in and are interested in, uh, that you would uh, develop that tremendous gift so that they would know uh, what it is that you're calling them to be and do in this world. Lord, we thank you for their strong bodies and the ways that they have excelled in sports. And pray, Father, that they would learn uh, teamwork and how to work together uh, with other fellow human beings to serve your purposes of love and grace and truth. Uh, and we just ask, Father, that you would help them to remember the purpose of it all, uh, and that is love. Love is deep inside all of their hearts, Father. So, so magnify that eternal gift. Uh, come to life in them. Lord, we all have the light of Jesus Christ deep within, and we ask that it would be magnified and come to life in all. Uh, we pray for Graham, Lord, so grateful for his boldness in the Lord and asking that you would continue to be with him, helping him in all of his struggles and uh, just sending him out to sing, to praise, uh, to speak your word. Lord, we thank you for Isabel, uh, Lord, her coming through a season of doubt and uh, having a more mature faith in and through it. Lord, we thank you for calling her to run, and we pray that she would finish the race and that she would be a blessing to so many. We thank you for Kelsey, Lord, and bringing her through the many injuries that she's had to sustain. And uh, Lord, you're gonna make her well, and she's gonna be back on the gymnastics mat. Uh, in the meantime, Father, just bless her in every single way. Thank you for Nemat, Lord. What wisdom for a young person. Help her, Lord, uh, each and every day and uh, just guide her and guide all of these young people, Lord. Be their good shepherd and help them to live the life you're calling them to live. We thank you, Father, for Charlotte and ask, Father, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon her and upon all of these blessed children of yours and help them to know you. Help them to know that love is over them all the time. Lord, whatever the particular gifts are of these young ones, bring them to life. They are deep within them. They are part of their DNA, Lord. So help them uh, to know them and to live them. We bless you for Allison, Lord, and ask that you would be with her. We thank you for helping her and her sister through the trial that they went through, her parents as well. We thank you, Father, for all the parents who have been such a blessing to these young ones. Help these uh, young men and women to honor them and to know that we want what is best for them and that we're there for them forever and ever. Lord, uh, thank you for my son, Dietrich. Uh, bless and keep him, Lord. Uh, and uh, uh, keep uh, strengthening his uh, mind, body, and spirit. And uh, raise him to be the man of God that you're calling him to be. We pray the same for all of these beloved children of yours. Thank you for Michael, Lord, for his strength, uh, for his good heart, and uh, just help him, Father, to live according to the ways of your son throughout his days. We thank you for Henry and his sense of humor, Lord, and his amazing ability to make people laugh, and uh, what a gift that is. And uh, just be with him as he's playing football, riding his bike around. Keep us all safe, Lord. These kids are not the best about wearing helmets when they're on their bicycles. So uh, help them and protect them and maybe fill them with wisdom to wear their helmets and be safe. Uh, I'm not speaking of Henry in particular. Uh, and we pray, Father, <laughs> for Nick. Uh, so grateful for his kindness. Uh, so grateful. Uh, for his love and asking, Father, that you would pour out peace that passes understanding upon all of these loved ones. Um, send your Holy Spirit, touch their hearts, minds, and bodies. And uh, as we send them out this day, O oh Lord, use them to your glorious purposes, touching other people's lives uh, with the promise of eternal life in your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, let's welcome these uh, beloved children of God. <clears throat> and stand up and share the peace with one another. They have joined the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and the ministries of Christ Jesus. The peace of Christ be with you all. You may be seated. Uh, friends, uh, we respond to the word of God that we heard in through these young ones by the offering of our lives and the gifts of our labor. Uh, let's do so uh, as we sing, Bless the Lord, O my soul. so much uh, for all the gifts in life. 
We thank you for our families and the ways that they've raised us in love and truth, grace, peace. Uh, we thank you for friends, Father, uh, and uh, the good times that we share with them. Uh, we thank you, Father, for the cries of babes and, and how they are singing your praise, just as Jesus said. Uh, we praise you, Father, for the good work that we have. Uh, and Lord, we lift up uh, the orphan, the widow, uh, we lift up the hungry, uh, we lift up the friendless, Lord, and pray that your body would reach them and touch them and help them to know how good they are deep inside and that you have a wonderful plan for them. Uh, we thank you, Father, uh, for the church and young people joining it and, and ask, Father, that you'd be with those who are filled with doubt and an uncertainty and that you would touch their hearts and minds just as you touched doubting Thomas's, Lord. Um, show yourself to them uh, and help them to believe so that they might live into the life that you desire for them. Uh, we take a moment now, Lord, to lift up to you particular people and places that are on our hearts and minds, uh, and we lift them up in silence or with our voices raised. My husband's uncle Joe and his family, the Chichellos, and his passing. Go to them, Father, and heal them. Touch them in any way that they need it. Resolve their problems, Lord. Bring healing, bring hope. Until that day of promised reunion and the consummation of your kingdom here on earth, just as it is in heaven, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Uh, let's stand and uh, bless one another with our closing song.
make his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going and your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going and your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 Boys and girls, young men and women, today you have made a decision for Jesus. You have decided to give your lives to Jesus and put him first. And that is huge. Uh, that is really, really hard. Uh, and it's really, really hard because it involves sacrifice. Following Jesus involves bearing our crosses giving up ourselves, giving up our lives, and saying, I am going to live for God, I'm going to live for Jesus. It means giving up our possessions, not gaining, 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 but instead giving, giving, giving. It means giving up our time, not living only and doing what I want to do, but instead being willing to reach out to anybody who's in need of help and offer the help that they need. It means offering our talents. You've shown your talents this morning. It means not hoarding them to yourselves and serving only you and yours, but serving the people of God. But friends, when you are willing to do that, give up your lives for the sake of Jesus, you gain life. When Jesus was willing to give up his life on the cross, he gained eternal life, he rose from the grave, and that's what you're gonna do. Uh, I did a Bible study this week on Mark chapter 10, and Jesus told his disciples that when you left your family, when you left your homes, when you were willing to give, 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 guess what? Now you are gaining mothers, fathers, grandmas, grandpas, homes, brothers, sisters, possessions, because you have become a part of the one family of God this day. So no matter where you walk, you're going to have people there for you to support you, to love you, to care for you. No matter what you're going through or where you are, um, you have these folks. And you have 2.1 billion Christians out there who love and care for you and can help you no matter what you go through. Uh, Jesus said to the disciples uh, at the end of his time, right before he ascended into heaven, uh, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So remember that God is with you. Uh, his spirit is with you. 
His love and mercy are never, ever going to leave you uh, and develop a relationship with that presence, with that love. Turn your hearts and minds to love and peace and ask for help whenever you need it. But the help is not only spiritual. The help is in the body of Christ Jesus, which you have joined today. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help anytime. We are here for you always. You have done an awesome job, JP says. I'm going to go and see mom. That a boy. That's right. We're talking about how we all have moms and dads everywhere. And we all want to just wrap you guys up. But here's the thing. Uh, you guys have become official active members of the body of Christ Jesus. Uh, so you don't just receive help, you give it. Take seriously the vows that you made this day. Take seriously this profession that Jesus is my Lord and be willing to help his little ones. There are people out there who are in need every single day. Uh, so remember that the gifts that God has blessed you with are for the sake of reaching out and saving those who are hurting in mind, body, or spirit and helping them to rise up into kingdom life. Um, figure out what it is that God has blessed you with, develop that gift, and live a glorious life with Jesus by your side every step of the way. Now everybody, please stand up and receive a blessing. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. And all of God's people say, amen. Uh, enjoy the fellowship, uh, the picnic that we're going to have, and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful day.